Hello, good morning to everybody. Uh, I will be talking today about uh, hypertensive outcomes after sleeve gastrectomy, as you've heard. Use the mouse, the, it's going to be easier on you. There's a clicker. This one? Okay, I have no disclosures. So a little bit of background. Um, as you are all aware, obesity and hypertension have a very well-established relationship. As this sort of depicts here, uh, obesity can contribute to the development of hypertension in many ways. This is partly due to mechanisms that include adipocytes themselves, uh, producing angiotensinogen, interleukins and cytokines, um, and in those mechanisms can upregulate the renin-angiotensin system as well as uh, pro-inflammatory effects that can lead to endothelial dysfunction and development of obesity-related hypertension, which can then lead to some of these sequelae, including, you know, CAD, kidney disease, uh, dysrhythmias, and so forth. So for our paper, uh, we've... Um, found obviously in the past that laparoscopic sleeve gastrectomy has been gaining popularity basically since the early 2000s as a standalone procedure. Prior to that, it was used as uh, the first step in a staged weight loss procedure for uh, bariatric patients. And in a study published by Bookwald et al. in 2004, they found that hypertension resolution was approximately 67% in aggregate bariatric surgery patients. However, there is um, not very much data that relates specifically to laparoscopic sleeve gastrectomy and within that specifically to hypertensive, hypertensive outcomes. So the aim of our study was to further delineate the long-term effects of this procedure on hypertension. For our methods, uh, it was a retrospective review and we included um, all studies where patients were aged greater than 18 undergoing laparoscopic sleeve gastrectomy that had uh, outcomes reported with greater than or equal to five years of follow-up, and we did not look at revisional procedures. We searched uh, the databases you see listed there. We used the terms for sleeve gastrectomy, hypertension, or blood pressure, and two independent re reviewers were used um, to sort through these papers. Using the Newcastle-Ottawa scale for assessment, all of the studies were rated uh, good, which most of them were, and a few fair, mostly just for uh, high loss to follow-up rates. And uh, unfortunately, we were not able to perform a meta-analysis on this um, due to the heterogeneity of studies in um, differences in reporting of what constitutes blood pressure and how they were measuring that. Uh, for our analysis, data from each study was pooled, and then we performed uh, our analysis on synthesis of the mean, uh, the range, and average percentages between the studies. And as I've mentioned, there, was, there were no standard definitions, and so uh, it was difficult for us to delve further into that. Uh, this is a listing of some of the studies that we found, uh, all of which had at least five years of follow-up. Uh, most of them did have fairly small patient numbers overall um, with hypertension reported as a secondary outcome. Another listing of studies here. Um, but the largest study was done by uh, Noka et al. in 2016, which had a total of uh, just over 1,000 patients. So for our results, we found preoperatively that these patients had an average age of 41 years, they were approximately 72% female, BMI just under 48, and the preoperative uh, prevalence of hypertension was 36.5% in uh, the aggregate population. Postoperatively, the BMI dropped to approximately 32 and hypertension rates down to about 15%. So we found that there was a resolution in hypertension in approximately 62.2% of patients and improvement was reported in another 35.7%. Mean follow-up time was just over five years and there was an overall loss to follow-up rate of about 15%. So what this has showed us is that laparoscopic sleeve gastrectomy is a safe and durable method to decrease uh, weight in patients as well as rates of obesity-related hypertension. Despite the fact that, you know, not all of these patients had resolution in their hypertension, there was improvement seen. Most studies that we looked at were retrospective in nature. Only one was prospective. Um, and the largest study, as I mentioned, comprised just under one-third of the total number of patients. 
There were no uh, specific data points on hypertensive patients. Only one of the studies did report pre- and post-operative blood pressure values, but they didn't comment on use of antihypertensive medications. And um, therefore, we were a bit limited in our ability to uh, analyze specifics for these patients. Limitations of our study were that it was retrospective in nature. Overall, there was a limited patient number. Uh, it was quite heterogeneous, and we were not able to delineate the patient specifics. Um, for these hypertensive patients. Moving forward, our plan is to perform a prospective cohort study. This will allow us to collect more extensive data, including systolic and diastolic blood pressures, um, different types, of, types and numbers of antihypertensive medications, and uh, to, to form um, one definition of what exactly will constitute uh, blood pressure and hypertensive cutoffs for these patients. And that will all lead to a decrease in heterogeneity and uh, improved ability to um, treat these patients and to monitor them moving forward. These are a listing of my references. I will take any questions you have.